Hey guys, welcome back to Creative Flame Podcast Network. We are doing the RPG a Day 2017. What's the seventh, seventh question? Is what was your most impactful RPG session? Okay, That's I deep. can totally answer that one. That's deep. I'm thinking the one I threw the brass dice at the guy. <laughs> oh, now we have to hear that story. No, it's like, not a real what? story. No. But I do have one where Dan threw brass dice at uh, mm-hmm. I Walk. Mentioning uh-huh. worlds of gaming. Uh-huh. So many bad games in that place. Do we want to do it or? What's your story, player? Oh, okay. oh, oh, did you want? Because I can. Okay. I mean, hey guys, welcome back to RPG a Day 2017. The Prince of the Apocalypse DD group is getting lucky and doing a couple of them in, in advance for you guys. So, it is August the 7th. What was your most impactful RPG session? Hi, this is Kelly, and uh, I would have to say the most impactful one was, it was Scion. It was the, Ooh. we were summing up uh, one of the, uh, our, our last Ragnarok and Roll session. And my character, Trixie, who is the uh, sign of Loki, um, has, has throughout this Ragnarok and Roll been placed in such ways to try and stop Ragnarok. That's what the whole thing. But she always seems to kind of screw up and it never actually completes the mission correctly. But we all live and stuff. But in the last one, her, she was taxed and she didn't understand what her task was. And so... She was betrayed, betrayed by somebody she had gotten kind of close to. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, she was hooking up with the dwarf, you know, in rock and rock and roll, you know. I mean, and it was it, technically it was a business arrangement. <laughs> she was going to be getting, you know, a. She was being paid for it. She, I was. Oh, being, hey, Trixie, <laughs> you do got, you? I'll do me. The nurse has to do that. She was, you know, she's a tad mercenary and, uh, you know, it's all about, but she was having a really good time with him. They were, you know, every night going out and having fun and having a good time. And turns out he betrayed me. And when she put on the gift that he made her, it then turned into a prison. And so she had to give up the heart of winter that she'd won in the auction. Although, to be fair, she did make it so that the doors couldn't fit on it. <laughs> she turned off their Wi-Fi. I kept turning off their Wi-Fi. <laughs> they were um, using a Sheldon box. Because the auction, they can't go the out in the day. And so she had to give it up. So here, thinking that she's going to fail yet again now, because the only way she could get out was to give the dwarf what he wanted. And so she did. And it you know, turns okay. out, I mean, it was kind of, on one hand, it was a good thing, but a whole city died. Not her fault, not her fault, but she, she, my character believes that basically Ragnarok is starting because of her, because she failed, and that he betrayed her, and her father used her as a pawn, as, you know, and it, it broke her. My character has been broken. Yeah. Her she heart. cried. I was literally crying in this, you know, it, it, I mean, it was like, it was devastated, this character. Um, I, she was broken and she's still broken. And so. we blame Jim. No, I blame, yes! I blame Loki. <laughs> I blame Loki. She blamed, blames her dad. But my character is, it was so impactful, the, the whole session. That yeah, it has now changed this character. She I was, was, I was in tears, you know, p- role playing this character. That's, well, that's you know how intense we get a co- attached to our characters. Mm-hmm. Need I remind you of the time that in the <sighs> same Ragnarok and Roll game, Scion, <laughs> that I told you I had a NPC husband and uh, and children. And yeah, yeah. Oh, just the one time I, 
you know, it's, why it's, did I roll twins? She rolled badly. It's kind of a day in real life planning the character's wedding. Yes, it was great. It oh, was, I have to tell you all about the wedding. It was but anyways. Cool. I showed him that cool church. And <laughs> okay. And you, I told you he was, you know, you stay away from him. I told the GM, don't, you know. To, so, her kids and husband were off limits. No so kids, we were on no our husbands. honeymoon. And you go and have my husband killed, like a, blown apart in front of me on and on me. Cruise. And I went ballistic, and I killed the seven dwarfs. Literally. Okay, no, two of them lived, right? I was so no, mad. No, the two you met later lived. The yeah. ones that were in the surveillance van, you killed them all. I honest to God killed the, the seven, you know, seven dwarfs and stuff. Oh. In yeah, her defense, the dwarf was killing a doppelganger that was I going to kill her when he didn't got her know privacy. That. But. She didn't know that. But I didn't know that. And I was like, no, I told you no, 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 no. You can't touch it. So, yeah, she and, was like a wreck. And, and for our podcast like, hey. listeners, I deleted seven minutes of you screaming I, I could No, no, no. Literally, and I kill it. I as soon as I described the head exploding and you, you see that kill smoking shotgun sitting out of Dark Van's window, she just... Lost I told you, shit. you were not allowed to kill him. That's just it. Why would you give okay. me those type of things? Why would you <laughs> not allow to kill like him? That? <laughs> yeah. So it's always a bad thing. can be very powerful, especially mm-hmm. when you have a GM who's got Machiavelli uh, uh, genius here. And then the group felt evil because they killed the dwarves I when did. they were I in the surveillance so van. They're like, why is this a surveillance van? And they hit play on the on the video that's up, and you show... Her husband running back in the gift shop, and then the doppelganger comes out of the mirror. Oh, but the thing and is, then knocks the reason him out why, and locks him up in the, in the castle. The reason why he, her husband, went back into the gift shop was to buy her another ring because she gave up her wedding ring to save all these um, people on, all these people on a boat. Cruise. Because one of the handmaids, yeah. basically, her sister got hurt, and she was going to kill all the humans on the ship unless she got gold that was, you know, but. It, but because it had to be specifically because it meant so much to her. Yeah. So There's a reason why the Scion game is the first podcast we started. Because we want to make sure we record that stuff. We've got some cool. serious, right. deep storylines. That's cool. Any other volunteers for this? All right, <laughs> impactful. Let's go with impactful on my real life. So I was playing a... I don't even remember what the system was at this point. I think the DM was just improvising the entire time. But... I'm playing with a girl who was then my girlfriend, and we get into this room where it's like, oh, you need, just need to go into this one place, and you make a wish, and we'll change whatever thing with the world. And it turns out our entire group had different goals with that. Uh-oh. And it becomes a race to see who can get to the center of the room first. Oh, dear. <laughs> unfortunately, while, on. unfortunately, while I'm a rogue, I am not in first place in this race. It is actually my girlfriend. <laughs> So I decided to give her a tap on the shoulder in the form of a knife in her back. Oh. <laughs> Stop, let's discuss this a little bit. You were just playing to your character. I was. We weren't dating in the game, so... No. <laughs> <laughs> Good yes, uh, Yes, but then that it, that turned into a, uh, a thing. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everyone at this table we go... You should have discussed this with me first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, the rest of the night was a le- But you threw a knife <laughs> into <laughs> my back! <laughs> uh, it turns out that is not a popular thing to do with. Your Don't partner. game to bed angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she was very determined that she was going to do the right thing, and we all screwed it up because I threw a knife in her back. Well, obviously... And if I had just... Not throw knives into people's backs. So uh, that's which... a good life choice, <laughs> typically. Who knew you had her back, but in the wrong way? Oh, <laughs> too soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a mistake. It turned out. <laughs> you can win the game, but lose. Lose <laughs> <laughs> oh, the war of love. Yeah. Bravo, sir. Very, that's uh, the way the sciatica severs. The moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Remember that, honey. <laughs> I've done so many bad things to you. I you know. survived the next night. It's okay. <laughs> oh, me? Hmm. Let's see. So, bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of what's coming to mind are the most recent Sunday game 
been in, and there's a lot of moments in there that I could draw on. Um, let's see. But I guess one of the one of the ones that was most impactful um, was the you know for, for reasons of foreshadowing and because it was an extended twelve hour session, we it was meant to be so that the players were emulating the tiredness that the characters were feeling. Um, so we're we're defending against this, helping defend against the siege of this capital city. Um, there's monstrous armies outside. They have cannons we didn't know about. Um, there's a dragon that swoops in, and we have to uh, you know take, deal with that. Um, and one of the most important, uh, uh, one of the most, one of the greatest moments of it, and is and is still occasionally a sore point between me and the DM these days. Uh, there was a big ramp up story wise. There's there's an extra planner being summoned for the siege against the city. Blah blah blah. We discover this. We discover it in writings all across you know our adventures. And when we get to the city, um, we're we're helping defend against a a flow of goblinoids that are coming into the city. And I'm saving something special. Yeah, look in your face right now. <laughs> right. Uh, so it finally appears, right? It appears. It's got a bunch of like weird flo floating, um, flying creatures around it as well. So I'm thinking, okay, warded of the wazoo. This must be the extra planer. It's the. It's up here. It's it got electric running all through it. So I'm like, okay, this is what I do, and I say, I'm, I'm casting dismissal. You off my plane. <laughs> fails the save. Fails the SR. Oh. Blows away a boss fight with one spell. Oh my god! And you oh banish him from whence he came. And, it, and he's banished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, later on in that night, I can tell he was still sore because he was using an assassin with a rifle. Um, Ooh, that's dirty. And uh, when I was like, I can't do anything, I don't have any spells. And he's like, Wah, I eliminated a boss fight with one spell. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> friggin' awesome, though. But yeah, the DM's probably like, okay, so now what are we going to do with the rest of the three hours? So, well, we Chinese. had like six <laughs> encounters <laughs> planned that night, so oh. it, was, it was expected, but that one was supposed to be about a half an hour, <laughs> not twenty, not ten seconds. seconds. <laughs> well, in, in all fairness, you did see the writing on the wall, so to speak, that, that there was a big summoning going to happen. So exactly. in character, your character had the... A perfect reason to keep the, the, the sucker dismissal. punch. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because everything else, nothing else was extra planar. Dismissal was completely useless to me up until that point. <laughs> awesome. So, I was running a game for the first time as a game master. And um, it was Unhallowed Metropolis, which is one of my favorite games. Um, although it's very deadly, so it's great to do some house rules with that game. Otherwise, you make a complicated character, and they die in that session. That's pretty common with the way they originally drafted the rules. Um, so I had some house rules in place to keep people from dying all over the place so we could roll through with our characters. I wanted people to have a role-playing experience, not just a slaughter. And I had created this dungeon... Um, in a faux Chinatown kind of experience, drawing from some elements of the Big Trouble in Little China movie. Awesome. Oh. And also from some archaeological elements with um, the terracotta soldiers. Oh, yeah. And I turned them into these terracotta soldier automatons because it was a steampunk game. Sweet. And so my, my crew had to go through all these locks to... Proceed. Ooh, You've heard about I've this. I've heard of this one. And um, well, Duncan was our thief, and he had really good skills. So I went in thinking they were going to get through the lock portion pretty well. And I sort of created these multi-step locks where you had to like stick your hand in and do these complicated things. Where I was like, Duncan will have no problem with it. But if I don't build up the intensity... And then they're gonna, it's going to be like, it's not going to have a good rhythm on this dungeon. It'll be too easy. So there needs to be some challenges 
as you go through, but not too challenging. I was not looking to actually kill Duncan <laughs> on the fucking locks or oh make him lose gosh. a hand. And he was just like failing and failing and failing. And I'm just like, they aren't even like little fails. They weren't even things where I could Critical. like <laughs> fudge it a little bit to be like, well, it took you a little longer. No, massive, terrible fails. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. As I'm showing the group the picture in the Dungeon Master Guide on page 120 that shows the arcane guy going to reach a grab a MacGuffin from a horrible death trap full of blades and things that look like they will take off your arm and the fact that the wall was covered with blood on the blades and bloody handprints from previous victims. That's Duncan's character's blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad, and also because I was kind of new to running a game, I didn't have, like, a good tactic for, like, circumventing what was happening. Like, I was, I was even trying to fucking soften this shit, and he was still <laughs> failing. <laughs> we we did not lose him permanently, mm-hmm. but it was so per- there was some permanent appendages so lost repairs. It is a game in which you can get some like you know bionic limbs and stuff, but at a cost. <laughs> um, so it was it was actually ridiculous because it was so hard to get through the locks that I created to be like average to easy, like pretty easy for this group that we we had to like. Take a breather before we hit the really hard part of the dungeon. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So I learned I learned some good GM things. I think I apologized to Duncan pretty profusely. And um, I, I still feel actually pangs of guilt about that one. I'm still like, oh, I failed. If it, if it makes you feel better, him. he he was bragging about it like badge of honor. Oh, that's good. <laughs> it does make me feel better. Oh, my God. It's that no shit, there I was moment. Because yeah. some of the best stories start with the horrible thing, and yet you survive. <laughs> right. Because when, as a GM, when you expect them to succeed easily, they fail. When you su- expect them to fail and have a hard fight, they succeed immaculately. No, that's true. <laughs> because by the time they got to the freaking terracotta automaton soldiers, that I thought was going to be like... Which is a great idea. Terrible thing. Yeah, just ask Glasta. Yeah. I thought it was going to be this terrible, brutal experience. They got in, they were like, Whoosh. they just like blew through the room. I'm like, what just happened? I spent a million hours crafting this part of the game and ten minutes crafting the locks. And you guys are like, the locks are doomed! I'm going to die! And then you get to the really hard part and you're like, yeah, we just roll this Shut dice, off. get a critical hit, and yeah, we're done. The great thing about both of these stories is that they're all dependent on the RNG. The random number generator, the D20s, yep. the D-whatevers, <laughs> the intensity around the success or failure. Is the chance. It is, can really create some awesome stories. And, yeah. and also, like, all of the guys in this group are really bright. A lot of engineers, a lot of historians, you know, just really smart, out-of-the-box thinkers. And so they hit the terracotta soldiers and they came up with a plan of attack where I was like, fuck me, man. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, okay, we're doing it that way? Great. Ah, we're going to blow through this. And then they did. So it was, it was actually wonderful and terrible at the same time. But see, that's yeah. magical because that's like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. You know, when they're, they're this defunct group of motley guys are having so hard difficulties doing simple things. But then when it comes to the killing shit, they got that. Oh, yeah. They're like, we got this. Boom. You're done with the big fight, like, in two minutes, you know. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I really loved my uh, terracotta soldier automatons, and I would bring them back. That's a really great idea. Though. But I would probably change shit up. Get them cross yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... It, 40 terracotta warriors with crossbows. <laughs> there would not be any way to, like, avoid them in the way that the gentlemen were able to, like, be well, you, workable. You give them the one round for them to wind up. Yeah. And then... <laughs> it's the death room. Then they smite. <laughs> and then it's that scene from American Gods where that guy walks out of the bushes and all of the arrows <laughs> yeah. melt directly into him and no misses. Like the, yeah. Yeah. And the Viking goes to the scragglings and finds them. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Although what's great and, and I'm glad that Jim had the initial idea of let's start recording these sessions yeah. 
because then you can go back to listening to them. You know what? As a matter of fact, I would like you to put on disc the rock and rock and roll. You know, jump jazz. Yeah, or so, yeah, something that because it's I, a good idea. It's way too long for a disc. Well, yeah, I mean, or at least you know, because I mean, it it was very you know yeah. that was like a roller coaster. It was. And when you get these moments and you're sharing these moments, that's the most impactful thing. Yeah. And, is, and weren't you asking for something that you could do as another Patreon reward level? <gasps> I that's, did on oh, Facebook. Yes. Where if you, yeah, if you did a certain reward level, you could request they, to have a certain series on a jump drive. That's true. Mm -hmm. The Kickstarter that we're going to be putting out shortly. Yeah, like, so it's all in one, ec all the extra little commercials taken out. Cut off you know, the, 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 the front and the end. Although, you know. That's, that's a great idea. Go back and idea. now that I have more skills in editing, I actually re-edit some of the earlier stuff that was just mm -hmm. like, and take the recording and put it on. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good idea. That, that is a good idea. That is a very good idea. It will, it will be done. I want one because. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, then what we do is we get some jump drives and we have somebody take Sculpey and make some kind of, you know, Scion Sculpey thing to put the jump drive into. I can work on that. Sort of like, remember the Game of Thrones? Yeah. Stark Wolf? There you go. There you go. I'll give you some homework. It's like I'm trying to think of. Because yeah, the scion, we, we can actually leak that now. That the sun, there's another scion How group that can go up there. It. We, we can't bake it. Well, you bake it, then you put it in. Uh, yeah, that's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> I go through those. You She's could got. take a plastic egg that's yeah. big enough for the, yeah, the jump drive that. and put that inside to make the hollow. and then Or just, just the a styrofoam, you know, because the styrofoam will melt, mm -hmm. but then it will help. Keep the shape of the when you bake or it. Okay, make I can a do wood that. plug in the exact same dimensions. That's true. There we go. Wood can be baked. And you can well, but then, it. but see, then you can't get it out. But oh. it was it. it. What if you but oh, start to it? What if you used a yeah something? Case? I hope we have impacted you with our impactful <laughs> episodes. Which my Woo! God, guys, you all have some really fucking good ones. I still remember the wedding episode. Oh, the wedding! I can tell you. I think we, we all have the multiple ones. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, mine was so impacting that I actually wrote additional stories of a follow-up because it hmm. had to be purged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have to go with one of the most impactful ones for me because I just realized I didn't say anything yet. That this would have been years ago, back when Imaginary Worlds of Gaming and Things for Thinkers was here in Tucson. It was our local game store. Hey, that's where I got my first dice. My yeah. first dice. They had this really cool concept of in the back of the parking lot, they had a place where there was like six game rooms where you could go in a game and borrow. Sort of like what most like Tucson Games and Gadget does here. But there was lots of space in a storage unit in the very back of the little compound. Compound. Well, we used to go in there. We'd, we'd check out the game store. We'd go game. Well, we had a GM. I won't say his name, but his name was awesome. But he was known for being a killer GM. Basically, he was at the end of his GMing through high school type of thing and burnt out running games for people. He really should have stopped GMing, taken a break, got the venom out of the system. But he was known for killing multiple players each game session. Oh my God. So we had this really amaze balls concept of we were, we were paying, playing plating books. So it's Heroes Unlimited and Risk mixed together. He let us pick any creature in Rifts that we wanted, total kitchen sink, because we all know Rifts is kitchen sink. If the GM doesn't rain in the rains, you can have all kinds of wonky, crazy stuff. So we all went with these crazy combinations, like Dan went with a superhero who was the mix between the Flash and Superman. Indestructible, but could run sonic speed. And I went with a Temporal Raider, which is basically this, this dimensional being who's all about fourth dimension and, and temporal magic. Because I thought if we were dimension hopping, it makes perfect sense for the group to bring somebody who can do cool things like, and you have a bag of holding, and you have a bag of holding, so that way we can go from dimension to dimension with all our stuff. And yeah, he basically ran this game where we were following and taking away items from the Rift's Mega Damage Dimension from SDC Worlds. And we're like, cool, we got this shit. Now my guy's got MDC that I can take a missile to the face and keep fighting, and eventually I'll grow back. One of the things he forgot to tell us was how he was homeworlding temporal mechanics between dimensions. If you take an MDC missile 
to an SDC world, it's still an MDC missile. And when you take a magic creature from an MDC world, it becomes an SDC world, which is the normal game mechanic. The missile normally would be either inoperable or SDC. Well, he kept them MDC. So, of course, half of our group got annihilated with the first wave of small missiles that came at us, because basically I did the whole, I can take this blast, I'll get between my teammates, and I can't take the hit, and I became little gold flakes. And basically this immense death trap, tailor-built for each of the players, like uh, my buddy Dan, who's running around doing super speed, there's a robot that could stop him and kick him into a wall. And on his turn, he would get out of the wall. And the robot would kick him into the wall. And we literally had two hours of gaming where when it became my buddy's turn, he'd get out of the wall and get kicked back into the wall. To the point of where all of us were saying, for God's sake, eventually he's indestructible. That wall will crumble to dust that he's being kicked into. He should be able to escape somehow. One of us needs to survive this murder hole. And, and basically it ended up where my buddy basically grabbed his character sheet, ripped it in half, threw it away, and says, you know what, I'm done for the day. So that, it, it was impactful for me as a player and a GM of don't drive your players to that point. No. And don't let shit get that. that. It's, it's not a who wins, who loses. It's, it's, it's a collaborative, fun game. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's good to push your people down in the mud. Sorry, guys. It's fun to, push, it's fun <laughs> so to step on you in the mud. That's right. Yeah. So that so way you can learn the lesson of falling down and get back up and be better. But the trick is, like I always say in a lot of the articles I've written and stuff, is be your player's number one fan. Oh, As a GM, you, I can't show you fuckers that shit. <laughs> but be your player's number one fan. Because basically we're all writing the story together. It's your story, not my story. If I want it to be my yeah, story, I'll go write a story. book and publish the book. You know, this is our story. Damn it, I gotta go write a book. <laughs> <laughs> you and Raymond Price, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you know, it's 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 if if I want that that storybook ending, I'll go write my own storybook ending where you know Queen Daenerys and Jon Snow get together, and marry, and take the dragons. Can't. They're spoilers. The Targaryens do did all the time. <laughs> I mean, I know that spoiler, but yes, <laughs> yeah, I think he's just gonna hook up with Sansa, <laughs> his half sister, who's not actually his half sister, his cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Cousins are fine. Cousins are okay, right? From Uncle where Daddy. I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Daddy. <laughs> okay, so so that <laughs> we broke Carrie. <laughs> that was a great story, though, Jim. It is really important. And, and it was just impactful as as a player and GM of it's not fun, to, you know. Call the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of the, the, the idea is it's supposed to be a challenge. It's supposed to be, not all challenges are challenges. We just talked about with the other events where good role playing, good tactics, shit happens. Shit goes amazing. And sometimes you go, no shit, there y'all was. Yeah. Other times when it's Atlas, you know, carrying the earth on his shoulder or Sisyphus. <laughs> I'm like, Prometheus was the eagles in the liver. But, but yeah, pushing that rock uphill just to have it fall down and fail yeah. repeatedly in a way that you can't work around. Yes. So it's just one of those, uh, yeah, that's not just cool. to make sure your fun, games are fun, damn it. Yeah, fuck that. Don't GM like George R. R. Martin. Oh, <laughs> George R. R. Martin doesn't GM like George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Especially if you're talking to him at Tuscon. He sounds nothing like I thought he would be for no, being a killer really GM. After the first guy. few sessions, and especially after the wedding, it would have to be, okay, guys, we know we're going to die. Well, let's make this scene something. And then we'll just make new characters next week. And yeah. it'll become a cycling character thing. Just, it's sort of like, um, what is that game, uh, Paranoia, where you have mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. set of oh, characters yeah. mm-hmm. and you are prepared. You have a follow in that die. system and basically you have your copy clones and you're, you're, you're killing each other in that game. When you play Paranoia, the idea is the GM will sit back and let you all kill each other because it's Paranoia. Yeah. You don't have color clearance to know the secret that I know that I shot you for. All right. <laughs> oh, paranoia. And by the way, for those of you, since we did mention the Red Wedding, if you like the Red Wedding, not giving a spoiler, but I will name the scene in my own special way of calling it the Red Wine Tasting. Da, 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 da. I haven't gotten there. I've only no, you haven't gotten there. Yet. I've only watched like five episodes of Game of Thrones, <laughs> enough so I could make jokes about it in my like improv show that I did. Last year in front of George R. R. Martin, like, <laughs> felt like I should be able to make Game of Thrones jokes just for him and have him sign my ass. That was priceless. 
Seriously? He's, yes. He signed my bustle. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> He would have signed my ass if I'd asked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we still have that uh, Game of Thrones book to give away for. Oh, yeah. wow. So, if you're still listening in this very long episode, <laughs> and you're interested in a copy of the uh, Song of Fire and Ice, the first book of George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones, we do have an autographed copy that we need to do a contest on Facebook for or something. Cool. Yes. And that is a good place to finally wrap it up there. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition, and Scion, Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.